Amen. Thank you for that song this morning. I'm grateful to have you here today. I'm grateful to see a church of uh, all different ages. And uh, nice that our young people are challenging us as adults to raise the, uh, raise the standard there. And I appreciate that. Those that brought their kids into uh, back for Sunday school and children's church as well. It is important that we not just hear the Word of God preached, that we hear the, God, the Word of God taught, and we build that fellowship together as well in the Sunday school hour. So thank you for being part of that. Today, uh, we continue in our series on angels and demons. We set out at the beginning of the year, as I mentioned, to read through the Word of God together. And we set the goal of reading through the entire Bible. And as we've been reading, there's, a, there's a certain themes that keep coming up in the first parts of the Word of God. And God warned His people over and over again to stay away from graven images and from idols. This week, as you're in the book of Joshua, the Lord warns them not to take the false gods of the surrounding nations, that country that the promised land, what they're going to take, to to get rid of those false gods. And as you study these idols and these false gods, you'll notice a few things about them. The first is that men have created them. Men molded them in what their minds wanted them to be. Versus what God has instructed us, how He has instructed us, and how He has revealed Himself to us. There's quite a difference there. We still do this today. We often try to put our image of God into a box that we've created. And sometimes we don't do it just with God, we do it with His creation and His instructions. One of the most interesting areas we do this with is with angels, or are with angels. Last week, we looked at what angels do. Today, we're going to look at what angels are and what they are not. And let us be cautious. That's what we're going to look at. Two things to be cautious about when dealing with angels. The first is this. Let us be cautious to follow God's revealing of angels. Now, what do I mean by that? My earliest memories of anything to do with an angel came from cartoons or Christmas shows, right? Uh, I loved Saturday morning cartoons. Anybody? You guys have missed that. That whole thing is gone now. I'm so sorry for your generation. It's like the greatest, that was the greatest thing ever. And, uh, you know, I got to watch the Super Friends and. Bugs Bunny, and you know, as I thought about angels, what comes to mind? Elmer Fudd. (laughs) After he has done something to blow himself up, and he's laying on a cloud now with his white flowing robe, with his wings and a harp, right? That's the vision we have when we think of that. Or Tom and Jerry, the greatest cartoon that was ever created. Droopy's a close second. And in there, we have Tom who's ready to pounce on the mouse and, oh, should I be good? Should I not? And what happens? On his one shoulder, an angel. On his other shoulder, a demon. And the one says, no, you need to be good, Tom. And then the other one's telling him, no, 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 you got to go and do the worst you can. And we see that played out over and over and over again. And then the most famous of angels is... Clarence, right? From It's a Wonderful Life. And he gets his wings if he helps save George Bailey. And the bell rings, and we know Clarence got his wings. Is any of this, <laughs> is any of this revealed in the Bible? Or is this all stuff that man has created? Well, let's see what the Bible says about God's messengers. I'm going to use some headers here from uh, uh, Sergeant, a gentleman that has done a wonderful job summarizing these. I liked his title, so we're going to use his titles today. The first is this. Angels are created beings. They're not God. They're created beings. 
One of the most important things to know is that God created them. Colossians 1.16. It's probably too small to read up there, but if you can, Colossians 1.16 says, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thy thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. Then, I think the most important one, Psalm 148, verses 2 and 5. Praise ye Him, all His angels. Praise ye Him, all His hosts. And then it says about them later, let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. God created the angels. The first thing we see there about them. The second we see is that they are spirit beings. They're not fleshly beings like you and I. They weren't just created by God, but they were created as spirit beings, meaning they have no material bodies. Hebrews tells us, uh, we mentioned verse 14 last week, but verse 13 says, but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand and until I make thine enemies thy footstool, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation, you and I? This means that being spirits, they don't experience physical growth. They're already what they are. They are spirit bodies. Angels have the ability, as we look through the Word of God, one of the coolest things about them, right? They have the ability to appear and then to disappear. Two weeks from now, we're going to be in the book of Judges and several instances there where we get to see angels appear and disappear. We, we think of Manoah, that's Samson's, ma, Samson's dad. Him, him and Mrs. Manoah, they're sitting there and, and they, they have a sacrifice uh, to, uh, to God. or They make this meal and as the flame goes up, the angel goes into the flame and disappears. Cool as could be. Gideon is sitting there and he's hiding and, and uh, the angel comes to him and calls him thou mighty man of valor and speaks to him for a while. He doesn't even get it that's a, that it's an angel. It looks so much like a normal person. He doesn't even get it at first. And then finally, when the, when the angel disappears, he realizes I was in the presence of an angel. But they can appear and disappear. Spirit beings. Next we see that they are non-reproductive beings. When God created the angels, this is the key part of this, when God created the angels, He created all of the angels. It wasn't like I created a little bit and they're going to have kids and more angels come from there. No, because we're going to find out later that can't happen. They're, all the angels were created at one time. So we have this large host that we see over and over the term host of angels. They're non-reproducing. Matthew 22.30, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. They don't do that. They're all there. We don't know the exact number of them, but there is a, it's called a host. Thousands upon thousands, if not millions of angels. There's angels in charge of each and every nation. There are angels that are, are for the watch guard of you and I. So there are hundreds if not mil thousands if not millions of angels in, in the world today. We next see that they are personal beings. This is wonderful. We see angels that when they, when they appear to people throughout the Bible, they, they show wisdom. They show intelligence. They have activity. Things that they do. And with that, they, they have conversation. They have the ability to do that. And they have emotions. One of the emotions that's, that's great is in Luke 15, it says, Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. The angels rejoice when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. They are personal beings with emotions and, and, and intelligence and wisdom. And with that comes they are supernatural or superhuman beings. What do I mean by that? Now, they're not omnipotent. They don't have the power of God, but they have been given power by God and they wield strength that's far above our abilities and our strength. In Psalm 103.20, says, Bless the Lord, ye His angels, that excel in strength, that do His commandments, 
We read last week in 2 Kings chapter 19 where uh, the city of Jerusalem was surrounded by the Assyrian army, Sennacherib's army there, and, and God sent His angel that night. And one angel killed 185,000 soldiers like that. They have supernatural or superhuman strength. We read of angels whisking away Lot and his family out of Sodom. We read of angel, the angel rolling the stone away from the tomb of Jesus Christ that several people had to put in place and seal. Superhuman. Now so far, we're probably uh, not seeing anything that we don't know, or, but I think there's some others that we do need to see that are contrary to what we see around us in the belief. And that is this, they are, they are deathless beings. Deathless beings. Now, what, what, what do I mean by this? Being spiritual beings created by God all at once, they are God's eternal messengers. And here's the critical point. Please hear me. Here's the critical point because I hear this all the time. When we die as Christians, we do not become angels. Okay? I'm not mocking you if you believe, if you've thought that. You've probably been told that. We see it in shows all the time. They are eternal beings, spiritual beings. We don't want to be that, all right? We want to be exactly what God has made us to be. And when we die as Christians, we do not become angels. Instead, we are the sons of God. Scripture that many people use for this is Luke chapter 20, verses 35 and 36. It says, But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, meaning Christians, and that the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels. Now that's the phrase people think, well, we become angels. No, 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 no. And are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Equal just means we will now be eternal beings as well. Once we, are, once we pass from this life, we will be with the Lord forever. And the verse also critically says here, we are children of God. Why would we give that up to be an angel? Wonderful beings that God has created. But He's allowed us to be His Son. We have been redeemed and we are there with the Lord. Jesus Christ did not die for the angels. He died for us. And we have the sonship through our Savior for eternity. Brother Tim Hodges did a, a Christian Life University class on angels many years ago. And I love this quote that he has. It says, Today, believers are experientially lower than the angels, yet positionally higher because of our union with Christ. One day, one day, however, Believers will be both positionally and experientially higher than the angels. We will be with the Lord forever. In that situation, we do, we do not become these angelic beings, but instead, we become the child of God with Him for eternity. And with that, the next one we find is they are also masculine beings. The only pronoun that you ever read about an angel is he, him, his. Any name of an angel is a male name as we look at Gabriel and Michael and even Lucifer. We also see that they don't have wings. We never read of an angel with wings. I know those pictures are awesome. They look great. But we don't read that in the Word of God. Now, the only wings we do read about are on the other two heavenly beings that we find, the cherubim and the seraphim in the, in the Word of God. And their descriptions, if you look at the details of what they look like, is nothing like the detail of what an angel looks like. So, we see we don't become them. They are all males. And so, that would be, even if we did become them, that would be awkward, right? So, that doesn't work either. And lastly, we see they are moral beings. And we'll find out more about this next week, but they have the freedom to obey and to disobey. And we're going to look at the fallen angels, how they disobeyed here in the future. Now, you may never have considered angels at all. 
Others of you might, maybe you just formed your opinion based on what you heard, what you've seen, those types of things. Does your, does your opinion or view of angels line up with the Word of God? If it doesn't, we need to alter what we believe to fall in line with the Word of God. To fall in line with what God would have us to do. We said that last week, and we really should be something we do every message where we hear from the Word of God. So let us be cautious to follow God's revealing of angels. Now something that's more applicable to our lives directly is this second one. Let us be cautious to not give angels God's worship. Let us not give angels our worship that is deserving of our Heavenly Father. Typically when I start a conversation, if I'm out in public or on a a plane and in a store, I don't typically tell people that I'm a pastor. Because I, once I do, the conversation goes in a different direction, typically, really quick. Uh, people clam up or they start saying weird things and they, they become guarded in what they say. It's just, it's just the nature of who we are, right? In those times when I do, they, I often hear them say something, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not religious. Uh, I, I don't attend church, but, but I'm spiritual. It used to be I'm religious, I just don't attend church. But now I'm not even hearing that. Now I'm hearing over and over, I, I'm spiritual. And maybe that's you today. You think, and you're, oh, well, I'm, I don't do those things, but I, I'm a spiritual person. What does that mean? Who or what are you worshiping? Being spiritual and being... Um, you know, be, looking beyond just the physical around here, I... I encourage you to do that. But what does it mean to just be spiritual? We are to worship God. God has given us clear direction to worship Him only. He gives us clear direction on how to serve Him as well. You go as far back as Exodus chapter 20. The famous chapter of the Ten Commandments as God is speaking to the Israelites and really to the rest of the world. He says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now notice it says no graven image or likeness of things in heaven above. Now I believe that means more than just the moon and the sun and the stars. I believe that deals with the spiritual beings as well. And if that's not clear enough, he tells us just outright in Colossians 2.18. He says, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility. And he says, and worshiping angels. Worshiping of angels. He doesn't want us to do that. The worship belongs to the Lord. Angels should never take the place of God in our life. Nothing should. But as we're specifically on this topic, angels should never take the place of God in our life. Because he says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And if we are worshiping them, they have become our God. And as you go through the Old Testament, you're going to find two phrases that illustrate this point over and over again as we see the reaction of people to them. If you go ahead to that next slide, we see these two phrases. As you're reading through and you come upon an angel, it'll say, an angel of the Lord. Other areas, it will say, the angel of the Lord. You say, you're just being persnickety there. No, 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 no. (laughs) It's quite a big difference. An angel of the Lord. That article is very specific there. Each time the angel appears, look for that article. Now, this doesn't happen in the New Testament because, well, we'll find out that in in a second. When it is an angel of the Lord, it is referring to messengers, God's messengers, an angel delivering God's message or carrying out the Lord's directive. But when it says the angel of the Lord, we see this angel speak as God, identify as God, exercise the responsibilities of God because it is God. It is God prior to Christ's birth here on earth. The appearance is known as either a theophany or a Christophany. And you're like, what's that word? It's an appearance of Jesus Christ prior to His birth. They call that a pre-incarnate appearance. 
And he appears to folks and he, he speaks to them and he's the fourth man in the fire and, he, and he's speaking to, uh, you know, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and he's, and he's with uh, Moses when he's speaking to Moses at, at different times and he's leading his people through the wilderness. The, the angel of the Lord is there. When we see an instance of an angel of the Lord, here's the, the part I'm trying to bring out, you'll see people try to bow down to that angel. If I saw an angel, I'd be terrified. Most of you would as well. It's just, that's just who we are as, as just normal human beings. And they're overtaken by this, and many times their natural reaction is to bow down to that angel. What does the angel do? Every time when it's an angel of the Lord. No, 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 no. Stand back up, stand back up. We see John, the apostle, as he's there getting the revelation from God. An angel comes to him two different times. He goes to bow down. Two times. Not just once. Two times. And he's, no, 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 get up. We're serving the Lord together here. And we see this instance as, as we do this. Now when we get to the angel of the Lord, when we get to this pre-incarnate uh, picture of Jesus Christ, then they bow down and worship the Lord and there is no stopping. Because... We are to worship the Lord. For many, the worship of angels is not a problem. But anytime we replace God with anything or anybody, be it a saint, be it Mary, the church, a spiritual leader, even God's created messengers, the angels, we are making them God in our life. And God tells us seven times in the Word of God, He says that He is a jealous God. He tells us, I am a jealous God. And after telling the Israelites not to make idols, He says, Thou shalt not bow down, to, down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Now what's that jealousy mean? God isn't jealous in the, the way you might get jealous for something or someone else, uh, what they have. Like, I'm jealous of that car that, that Jack has. Or uh, I'm jealous of, of that trip that Brother Rick went on. No, no, no. It's not that type of jealousy. God's jealousy is something that is rightfully His. As Christians, as the church today, it is the jealousy that a husband would have for his wife justifiable jealousy a just jealousy and Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians 11 too for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ speaking of us the church God is rightfully jealous as Christians, we are the Lord's and no one or no other thing should have our love and our worship. You might consider yourself a spiritual person. Maybe you're watching this later on and you consider yourself a spiritual person. I, I am not mocking your desire to be more than surface level in this life. But angels, spiritual beings, are never to be the focus or even part of our worship. It is our Heavenly Father who is to receive our worship in which we are saved through faith, His sinless Son, Jesus Christ. See, we can be spiritual, but each of us have a sin problem. Spiritual as you want to be, you still have a sin problem in your life. And there is no amount of working through that that can resolve that sin says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we've come short of that. And following just our spiritual side and seeking spiritual beings doesn't take away our sin. It's when we see who we are. A sinful person. Might be spiritual, but a sinful person. And that we must pay the punishment for our sin. And that punishment is separated from God for eternity in a place called hell. It says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
See, God commendeth or gave His love toward us while we were yet sinners. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, and He died for us. It's a matter of accepting that gift of salvation. Spiritual as we want to be, but until we deal with our sin and accept that gift of salvation, we're never really that spiritual being that God would have us to be. If you've never done that, I encourage you to call out to Christ today. We do that through prayer. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you done that? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? It's not a progression. It's a decision. Have you made that decision? For us as Christians, we need to watch who receives our worship. And we learn from these beautiful angelic beings, these messengers that God has given us, we need to put our mind in the proper place, thanking the Lord for them, but bringing all of our honor and worship to Him. Let's pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank You for the attention of those that are here today, those that maybe will watch this later. And I ask You to be with us, our hearts, and if uh, there are any that don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that today You would just draw them to You. Help them realize their need to make this decision. Heavenly Father, give them strength, courage to do that. Be with us as Christians here today that we would serve You, that You would receive the, the worship that You deserve, that we would look at Your Word and that we would not put it into our f- mind frame, but that we would, we would be open to what You have, be it angels or whatever subject, dear Heavenly Father, that we would follow You in that and adjust our lives accordingly. Be with us now and in Jesus' name, Amen. If you would stand with me for a time of invitation. This is a time where you can come and pray at the altar place if you'd like to be a part of this church you can join follow the lord in believers baptism as you saw those that did today maybe there's a someone you need to be praying for praying with or those that need to come to know christ today just speak to one of our altar workers say show me how to be saved and they'll open the word of god with you and pray with you as brother milt sings